Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Overheard some people talking the other day, uh, and one person said, I asked them to sign their name, and they said they couldn't because they don't know cursive. And that then degenerated into discussion about what they do and do not teach in schools these days. But I pointed out, as the attorney present, that uh, you don't need to sign your name in cursive. And somebody said, well, yeah, but most signatures are in cursive. Doesn't mean they have to be, though. And that's the interesting point. So what constitutes a legal signature? What constitutes a legal signature? So I'm going to start with one definition from the Uniform Commercial Code. And the UCC is something I work with quite a bit. It doesn't apply to every aspect of your life. But it's, it's interesting because their definition is so concise and clear. And it actually parallels what would appeal to you in your average everyday life. Okay? Section 3-401. A signature may be made manually or by means of a device or machine and by the use of any name, including a trade or assumed name, or by a word, mark, or symbol, executed or adopted by a person with present intention to authenticate a writing. So you'll notice, first of all, it says manually or by means of a device or machine. Believe it or not, if you sign a document and fax it to somebody with the intention that the thing that pops out at the other end is signed, boom, that's a signature. So if you actually got something that said, if you agree with this, sign below and fax it back to us. And I understand you haven't got a fax machine. No one does. <laughs> I'm simply pointing this out. So that's one interesting angle. And I remember when fax machines first got into vogue, people were wondering about this. And most people said, well, gee, a uh, signature is any mark that you caused to be made with the intention to authenticate a writing Guess what? That mark that pops out at the other end, even though you are not technically uh, in control of that fax machine in that sense, you're causing it to kick out a signature. So that counts. But then it says any name, including a trade or assumed name, or by a word, mark, or symbol. Now, the name and trade name we're going to ignore for now because that's more of a commercial setting. Like if you were signing on behalf of your company, but... A word, mark, or symbol. And notice right off the bat, it just says that if you've adopted a word, mark, or symbol as your signature, and we've all seen people who've got signatures that are illegible gibberish, if that's their signature and they do that with the present intention to authenticate the writing, yes, that's a signature. And so we joke about when Prince was calling himself the artist formerly known as and had a weird symbol, if he had adopted that symbol, as his signature, he could have signed documents that way. He could have endorsed checks that way. He could do all kinds of stuff and say, that's, that's my symbol. Look, 3-401B, word, mark, or symbol, executed or adopted by a person with present intention. I say, Steve, adopted by a person versus ex executed. Uh, yeah, you can actually have someone else sign your name for you. If, you. if you say, I want this person to sign my name for me, and that's my signature, that's good. Uh, there are proof issues with a lot of this. As you can imagine, if I come into court and I got a piece of paper with some weird mark on it, I go, yeah, this is his signature. If that person goes, no, it's not. What are you talking about? That's a weird mark. Well, that, that's a proof issue. The point is that if you agreed to make that your signature and you asked someone else to sign it for you, intending to be bound by it, that right there, my friends, is a signature. Now, I found a decent article on this um, written by Lisa Burden and the Headline is, what are the rules regarding signatures in contracts? Which is what most of us are looking for, right? Um, you know, an autographed baseball <laughs> probably isn't a contract. Probably. But she writes, the signature is the most common way to show that you've read and agreed to a contract. And I've said that before, that you have to understand that when you sign a document, later when you come into court and go, I didn't read it. Well, what did you think you were doing when you signed the document? And one of the things is you're acknowledging that you agree with it. This long-standing practice streamlines approval workflows. It's crucial for business owners across various sectors. Even if one signature is so unique and stylized as to be virtually illegible, it still carries legal weight. And it doesn't have to be at all legible, and it doesn't have to be a name. Like I said before, you can just use a weird symbol. And I've seen some signatures that are just, you know, a hash mark or something. There's a shift from traditional handwritten signatures towards digital signatures. We know about that, too. So today, companies offer e-signature solutions that automate the process, and I've done a whole bunch of transactions recently 
where I had documents sent to me, and they said, you can e-sign these and then send them back. And I did that. So that can work also. But interestingly here she talks about usually a signature is someone's name written and stylized. Usually. However, that is optional. All that needs to be is some mark that represents you. It can be a series of squiggles, a picture, or even the traditional X. Remember in the old movies, some guy is, is out west someplace and somebody's got a document. Uh, it, could be, it could be the claim, the gold claim, or it, it, it could be, uh, it could be uh, who knows? But there's a legal document. And you got to sign this, and the guy goes, I'll make my mark, and he, and, he, and, he, and, he, and he does an X. That's a legal signature. Absolutely, all day long, and twice on Sundays. So as long as it records the intent of the parties involved in a contractual agreement, it's a valid signature. She writes, usually the mark's made by pen, but not necessarily. You can sign in pencil if you want to. Magic marker, sure. El Marco, Sharpie, all day long. Anything that marks the paper can be a signature. Pencil is not favored, of course, because it's been smudged or be erased. But a signature made with a pencil is as valid as a signature in a pen. And by the way, I remember, this goes way back, in the 70s or early 80s, there was a company that started marketing pens with erasable ink. And people were freaking out. Oh my gosh, so I can write something in ink and someone else can erase it and change it. Yeah, if they've got the exact, exact same kind of pen and they got the eraser and they know that you used it, but it didn't cause a cataclysm. Uh, signatures can also be made with stamps or electronic means. And we've all seen those checks that have been stamped instead of signed by somebody because it takes too long to sit there and sign all these checks for a couple cents a piece. <laughs> Ask Steve Martin. So signatures on digital documents are becoming increasingly relevant for uh, employee onboarding, procurement procedures, sales operations. If you've been involved in um, uh, a lot of banks and uh, real estate transactions often involve the e-signatures going back and forth. Uh, those uh, help automate and streamline these procedures. And then she points out that if you cannot sign the contract yourself, you can give someone the authority to sign on your behalf. They're not stepping in your place and saying, I'm signing this. No, they're saying, I'm signing it for them. So the person signing is not being bound by the signature. Assuming they've got the authority to do it, they're binding someone else with that signature. So keep in mind that there is absolutely no requirement that your signature be legible or that it even be your name. Now, if you were to sign your name as someone else, that is, I decided to start signing all my documents with the cursive that looks a lot like it says Bob Smith. And if somebody goes, hey, Steve, I noticed you signed your document. I can clearly read it. It says Bob Smith. Um, a court could look at that and go, mm, you, you, you can use a signature, uh, a mark, or whatever you want to put in the paper. However, that might appear to be something you're doing to be deceptive. So I can see a court having a problem with that. Okay, So if you just make a weird mark all day long, if you spell something out that is radically different than your own name, that might be a problem. That might be a problem. However, I have to tell you that the cursive thing is absolutely not necessary. You can print your name all day long and twice on Sunday. However, I can tell you there's a couple oddities I'm aware of. One of them is Michigan titles in the, uh, it, it, for, for years they've done this, that the seller has to sign their name in a specific spot and then put in their name and address and also what they sold the car for. <laughs> so the buyers are always like, leave that blank, leave that blank. But you're supposed to sign your name. And they tell you to print your full name as it appears on the title. So your full name as it appears on the title might include your middle name, which many people don't include in their signature if, in fact, their signature is legible. So let's suppose your name is Bob James Smith. Many of those people would sign their name Bob Smith. But the title actually says, as appears above, and if you signed it Bob, James, uh, Bob Smith without the James, the Secretary of State's office will often kick that back and go, that is an improper signature. It's something that drives attorneys crazy because we all look at it and go, that is the guy's signature. It's a signature. But when they say sign your name as above, they're asking you to sign your signature in a way you don't normally sign your signature. 
But because it's a mark you make with the present intention of being bound, et cetera, et cetera, it is a signature. <laughs> They're asking you to modify your signature for this one weird instance. And they also say it's got to be legible. So somebody who doesn't normally sign their name in a way that's legible has actually got to slow down and do it in a way that is readable by somebody else. And so I've actually seen somebody who has a signature that's absolutely just a, just unreadable on every level. I go, look, you've got to sign your name so it's readable and include first, middle, last. And they actually just spell it out and call it a signature, and there you go. The real point here is that if you decided from this point forward, I'm going to sign my name by just drawing a line and another line, maybe putting a little star right there. As long as that's your signature that you've adopted with the present intention to authenticate the writing, et cetera, boom, that's your signature. So signatures do not have to be in cursive. They do not have to be legible. They have to simply be the mark you make to indicate your agreement with something that's written. That's it. That's it. So there's legal impact or effect of signatures that we could talk about another day, such as when a police officer says, you're signed this ticket, you're not admitting fault, you're simply indicating that you received the ticket. And that, of course, is something that can be done also where what the function of the signature is can be quite different. There are also signatures that must occur under certain settings, such as executing a written will. And in many states, if somebody types up a will, and, and let's suppose that you sit down with a, an estate planning attorney and you discuss everything you want in your will, and they bring you the will and say, here's your will, and you read it and you agree it and you, and you want this will to take effect. Many states have got all kinds of rules about how you sign it in front of witnesses who then also must sign it to indicate that they witnessed you signing it. And it depends on the way it's worded in your state. I remember reading cases in law school where somebody was outside the room looking in through a window and said, yeah, I could see him signing it through the window. And then it was brought up to me and I signed it. And it turns out in that state, they said you had to be present watching it being signed. And they said that the closed door between you and them made you not present. I mean, but that's another story for another day. The key here is the signature is the mark you make to indicate that you've agreed to something. It doesn't have to be in cursive. Uh, ideally, it should be something that kind of resembles your name, but technically it doesn't have to be. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Ever get the feeling that sometime early in your life, there must have been a briefing that you missed?